Hello, my name is Julia Kim LeBlanc, and I'm an Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Gastroenterology and Hepatology at Indiana University Health in Indianapolis, Indiana. The article I'm discussing was recently published in Gastrointestinal Endoscopy, and it is entitled, A Prospective Randomized Study of EUS-Guided Celiac Plexus Neurolysis for Pancreatic Cancer, One Injection or Two. My co-authors include John DeWitt, Mohammed Al-Haddad, Lee McHenry, Stuart Sherman, Michelle Wan, Kathleen McGreevy, Cynthia Johnson, Thomas Howard, and Keith Lilmo. I felt it was necessary to do the study because in practice, patients with unresectable pancreatic cancer and pancreatic cancer-related pain had a wide range of responses and pain relief after an EUS-guided celiac plexus neurolysis. The degree of subjective pain relief that we observed clinically really varied widely from two to 32 weeks, and the degree to which pain decreased also varied from mild pain relief to complete pain relief. We wanted to better understand the extent to which varying our technique of EUS-guided celiac plexus neurolysis affected pain relief. In addition, there's no standardized approach to performing EUS-guided celiac plexus neurolysis both a unilateral approach and a bilateral approach of injecting the neurolytic agent are used. And it is unclear if one method or approach results in better pain relief. In an effort to better understand why there is such a wide range in pain relief response, we conducted a single-blinded, prospective, randomized, parallel group study. The hypothesis was that there was no difference in outcome, namely pain relief, if a unilateral or a bilateral injection approach was used. 50 patients with pancreatic cancer-related pain were randomized into two groups. Group A underwent EUS-guided celiac plexus neurolysis using one injection, and Group B underwent EUS-guided celiac plexus neurolysis with two injections, or a bilateral approach. Because the patient's pain relief can vary from day to day and week to week, we chose to interview patients by phone at 24 hours and after the uh, procedure weekly. Using a scale of 0 to 10, where 10 represents the worst pain, we defined our outcome of pain relief as a reported pain score of 4 or a 30% reduction or more in pain scores from baseline. Included in this definition, the patients did not have an increase in pain medication consumption. We defined a complete response as someone having no pain and no increase in pain medication consumption. Overall, three quarters of patients had pain relief as we defined it. A complete response was observed in four patients. There was no difference in pain relief between the two groups. As far as the onset of pain relief is concerned, there was no difference between the two groups. The time to develop pain relief as we defined it was 28 days for the one injection group and 21 days for the two injection group. As far as the duration of pain relief is concerned, there was also no difference between the two groups. The Kaplan-Meier estimate for the median duration of pain relief as we defined it was 14 weeks overall, 11 weeks for the one injection group, for, and 14 weeks for the two injection groups. We also noted that the onset of pain relief was not associated with the duration of pain relief. We also noted that there was a trend with respect to smoking. 56% of smokers experienced pain relief compared to 82% in patients who never smoked. The p-value for this uh, was 0.08. There appeared to be no differences in survival between the two groups. The median survival in the one and two injection groups was 25 weeks and 35 weeks, respectively. Our study adds the following to existing knowledge. First, varying the technique of EUS-guided celiac plexus neurolysis did not affect onset or duration of pain relief. This is likely secondary to the equivalent distribution of the total amount of numbing agent and neurolytic agent in the celiac ganglia region, regardless of the injection used. Second, there is no direct relationship between onset of pain relief and durability of pain relief. Third, there was no difference in survival after EUS-guided celiac plexus neurolysis between the two groups. Fourth, there was a trend for better pain relief 
in patients who had never smoked. And number five, with respect to complications, one patient experienced transitory hypotension, likely secondary to sympathetic blockade. This resolved immediately after a liter of intravenous saline in the recovery room. And a third of patients experienced temporary post-procedural pain. Knowing this, what should come next? The next step in understanding the efficacy of EUS-guided celiac plexus neurolysis should involve the direct injection of ganglia. The effect of direct uh, injection of celiac ganglia is one unique advantage of EUS over percutaneous or surgical approaches. The extent to which pain relief occurs when celiac ganglia are injected during EUS-guided celiac plexus neurolysis is of interest as it will help us further understand the nature of pancreatic cancer-related pain and its subsequent treatment. A prospective study evaluating direct celiac ganglia injection is warranted. In addition to how and where we inject neurolytics during EUS-guided celiac plexus neurolysis, we should also consider what we are injecting. Historically, alcohols are dehydrating in nature with the goal of neurolysis. However, perhaps other medications used to treat neuropathic pain or inflammation would be useful in prolonging efficacy. There is definitely more work needed in this area. In conclusion, we have shown that there is no difference in efficacy when one or two injections are used during EUS-guided celiac plexus neurolysis in patients with unresectable pancreatic cancer and pancreatic cancer-related pain. This is important as a unilateral approach during endoscopic ultrasound guided celiac plexus neurolysis may be more desirable as there are always theoretical concerns of injury to local blood vessels and the left adrenal gland. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact me. Thank you for your attention.